This is question 20. Here we're told that Reese has a beehive. We're then told that the number of bees in the beehive is decreasing. And we're told that Reese counts the number of bees in the hive at the start of week 5 and the number of bees in the hive at the start of week 7. We're then given the results in a table. And then we're asked to assume that the population of bees is decreasing exponentially. And we're asked how many bees were there at the start of week 2. So I'm just going to pick out this phrase to begin with, decreasing exponentially. So what this means, this means that the amount of bees will decrease very sharply at the beginning and then it will slow down as time goes by. And we can, what we can do is we can think of this almost like a percentage reduction. And it's a little bit like compound depreciation. So it's a percentage reduction that is repeated. And what I need to do here is I need to figure out what is the rate of decay. So we can think of decreasing exponentially. This is uh, ex exponential decay, it's known as as well. And we need to figure out what the rate of decay is. So what I can do here is a couple of things. I could either figure out what the rate of decay was over the two week period. But the problem with doing that is that I need to work out what the number of bees were at the start of week two. So I could work out what the rate of decay was between week five and week seven and work backwards. But that would, if I then worked backwards, that would take me to week three and then to week one and it would skip out the week that I need. So rather than look at the rate of decay over a two week period, I'm going to look for the rate of decay over a one week period. So if I think about this, if I'm thinking about a percentage reduction and I've, I'm starting in week five, I'm starting in week five with 1,200 bees. To get to week six, to get to the number of bees at the start of week six, we're talking about a percentage reduction. And so to reduce an amount by a percentage, we would multiply by the percentage multiplier. So we could say that to get from 1,200 to the number of bees in week six, that we would multiply by a percentage multiplier, which is the thing that we don't know at the moment. So we would multiply by x. Then to figure out how many there were in week seven, so I could then call this 1,200 multiplied by x or 1,200 x. Then if I think about this, how can I then go from week six to week seven? Well, I would multiply by that percentage multiplier again. And that would then leave me with 1,200 x multiplied by x, well that would be 1,200 x squared, because I've multiplied by x and then multiplied by x again. So what I then can say is that because I've got an algebraic expression to go from week 5 to week 7, so multiplying by our percentage multiplier, what I can then say is that this 1,200x squared is equal to 900. So when I multiply 1,200 by the percentage multiplier and by the percentage multiplier again, that gives me 900. So what's left for me to do is to work out what x is. What is that percentage multiplier that I'm getting that's taking me from week to week, okay? Or what I can think of this is, what is the rate of decay? So, what I can say is that now I've got 1,200x squared equals 900. I can then say that x squared will be 900 divided by 1,200. Then, I can say that x will be equal to the square root of 900 divided by 1,200. Or I could just say that that is the square root of three quarters. So my percentage multiplier is the square root of three quarters. 
um, which I guess I could simplify that again, couldn't I? I could say that's x equals root 3 over 2. So there is my percentage multiplier. That's how I'm getting from the population of bees from week to week. I'm multiplying by root 3 over 2. So all that's left for me then to do is to work backwards. So if we go back up to here, and I imagine that I wanted to work out how many bees there were in week 4. Now if I'm going from week 5 to week 6 by multiplying by x, and then from week 6 to week 7 by multiplying by x, then to go backwards, I'm just going to have to do the inverse. So instead of multiplying by x, I'm going to divide by x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 1,200 and I'm going to divide by x, which is root 3 over 2. So that would give me what I've got in week 4. Then, after that, I'm going to take my answer to this and divide that by root 3 over 2. So 1,200 divided by root 3 over 2. So that amount. And then I'm going to take my answer there and divide it by root 3 over 2. Hopefully you can kind of see a pattern here. And so to work out what I would have in the second week, well, that is going to be that quantity divided by root 3 over 2 again. Another way that I could write this is I could just divide by root 3 over 2 cubed. So let's do that. This is going to give me 1,200 divided by root 3 over 2. And that is to the power of 3. Um, let's just put brackets around it just in case. Um, so that is raised to the power of 3, so cubed. So that gives us 1,847.5. So what I can say here is that my final answer, the work that I did was 1,200 divided by root 3 over 2 cubed. So that's just the same as divided by root 3 over 2, divided by root 3 over 2, and then divided by root 3 over 2 again. So 1,200 divided by root 3 over 2 cubed, and that gave us 1,800 and what was it? Uh, 40. So we've got 1847.5. Let's call that 1,848. So rounding to the nearest whole number because we're talking about the number of Bs. So 1,848 as our final answer.